This can happen when you see something that's very gross. It can happen when you smell something that's very gross. It can happen when you see something come out. It can happen when something goes in. What am I talking about friends? I am talking about gagging. And this Tipsy Tuesday is dedicated to the management of gagging. First things first, let us recognize friends that when you're talking about gagging, it is a natural and a normal response of the human body. And most importantly, it is protective in nature. It ensures that the patient survives the impression procedure. And here for the first time friends, I am going to reveal to you an impression that I had made for a patient in May of 2019. And that impression still stays with me. I'm not saying I'm proud of this. I'm saying it can happen to absolutely anyone. This patient did not gag at all until I removed this out. I had no clue the light body had flown that far deep. So please do not run away from gagging. Gagging is natural. It is normal. It is protective. However, it is involuntary for the patient, but to some extent, when it comes to us as dentists, it is controllable, all right? So let us recognize that it is important to know beforehand whether I have a gagger or not in my chair. And how do I know that? Whether my patient has a massive gag reflex, yes or no? Two ways, one is inquire. Simply ask the patient, do you have a gag sensation? Probably this patient has had an impression made in the past and knows that he or she does gag. All right. The second is examination. A simple way of examining whether the patient has a gag or not is take your impression tray, place it on the maxillary arch and hold it there for five seconds. This is before you actually make an impression. If your patient gags, you know you have a gagger and that's where you incorporate different aspects of coping with the gag. Now, let me tell you, there is no single universal answer to management of gagging. Why? Because it is multifactorial in origin. Which is why when I am addressing the aspects of coping with gaggers, I am going to do this under four different headings. First is avoiding trigger zones. Second is distraction. Next comes to reducing intraoral time. And finally, Allied. Now, because there are a lot of different techniques, this Tipsy Tuesday also comes to you in two parts. In part one today, I shall address avoiding trigger zones. Now, for this, I need to know what are the trigger zones, all right? And something that we all are aware of, the soft palate, all right? And the posterior aspect of the tongue. These are two areas that are extremely sensitive and often induce a gag. So how do I avoid these trigger zones? Answer is simple. I always start with making the mandibular impression first. Especially if this is a patient who's getting an impression done for the first time, always start with lower. Patient now has confidence in what is happening, knows uh, what is going to happen and, and therefore is more prepared for a maxillary impression. And the next, very obvious, very obvious things. Always use a mandibular tray for making maxillary impressions, especially if you are talking about FPD impressions. Why? Because you don't need to record the palate. And more importantly, you save material. All right. So you save material, you save costing and at the same time avoid gagging. So use mandibular trays for mandibular impressions. Use mandibular trays for maxillary impressions as well. Next again is an absolutely amazing tip friends. Start using triple trays for making your impressions. These are your closed mouth impressions. Go ahead and watch my video where I have explained to you the use of Bite Max, which is a metal triple tray that I have personally designed and is marketed by MIK Dental. Next, it may sound very obvious, but ensure proper consistency because if your alginates are not mixed properly, if they're too runny, it is going to go down the throat cavity and induce a gag. Same holds true for make sure that you avoid overloading, be it alginate or be it light body. Look here, I have used a lot of light body and this is extra viscosity, it's just flowing everywhere. All right, so please make sure that you, you don't use more than what is needed. And for this particular topic, last but not the least, make sure your patient has an upright head position. 
it's typical right for us to work in a reclined position now if you make an impression in a reclined position remember gravity is going to pull the light body or your alginate towards the throat cavity do the exact opposite have the patient sit up head forward and chin down this makes sure that the material is flowing away from the throat which is why often we say start looking at the tips of your toe nails all right this is the alert feeding position friends these are some simple ways that we can avoid trigger zones thereby conquering the gag come next tuesday i will share more tips of how to manage the gagger so go ahead and enjoy the video share it with your friends like comment save it come next tuesday as i share with you yet another tip that makes your life in dentistry a tad bit easier bye bye